All right, guys, so I'm about to show you one of the easiest agua frescas you can make. My two quart pitcher, I'm going to squeeze about four to five lemons. Remember, guys, I always reserve some for garnish because garnish is everything. You're also going to need a little bit of cafecito. <laughs> just kidding, guys. If you know, you know. That's just where I keep my sugar. And then using this mixing stick, guys, get your mind out the gutter. We're going to add our maracuya, aka passion fruit. I like to buy it in packs because it is cheaper, tastes literally the same, and we like to save money. We're gonna add some ice, fill up the rest of our pitcher with water, and then we mix. Now this is the perfect time for you to check for sweetness. If it needs more sugar, add more sugar. If it's too sweet, just add more water. Now that right there is passion fruit popping boba, and it comes with a little syrup. We're going to add it to the bottom of our cup. I got that on Amazon, by the way. Add some ice to your cup, and then pour yourself some delicious and refreshing passion fruit lemonade with passion fruit popping boba. Hope you like this recipe. Bye! Let's pack today's lunch packs for friends and followers. Today we're making them some chile rellenos stuffed with huitlacoche. For those who don't know, huitlacoche is corn truffles. So I remove all of it from the corn and then I make a guisado. Then I char and peel all of my chile poblanos and then I begin to stuff them with cheese and then our huitlacoche guisado. Now most people that I know eat this in quesadillas, but you already know Nana Joe's out here doing the freaking most and I'm going to stuff them in the chile rellenos and then I wrap them in some puff pastry. And I butter up their chile buns with a little bit of egg wash, pop it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 30 minutes until they get nice and puffy and golden like this to go along with the chiles guys we are gonna make a creamy salsa poblana using all these ingredients i'm gonna list on the screen and we blend it up fry it in a little bit of butter and then we begin to plate we're gonna add a little bit of the salsa poblana on the bottom some more with la coche guisado and then i add my chile relleno on top we're also gonna do a side of white rice with corn a little side salad para que llene the little spot and some extra salsa poblana to go on top of the chile for the drink they had the option between a soda or a prickly pear lemonade that's it guys i'm just gonna get everything ready for them so they can come pick up during lunch time bye Let's pack today's lunchbox my friends and followers. Here we're making them some carnita bowls. Just to clarify, I am saying bowls and not balls. But anyways, we're going to begin by frying up some pork butt pieces and some pork lard. We're also going to need a whole onion and a whole garlic head. Add a couple of bay leaves in there, some clove and some peppercorns. And then we're going to add a tablespoon of salt into some water and we're going to pour it into the hot lard. Don't worry, nothing's going to happen. A couple of oranges along with the orange peels, a soda pop for color. And then we let this cook for about three hours until it's nice and tender and it looks like this. The bowls are going to be a little on the pobrecito side because I did forget a couple of ingredients, but we're going to pretend that they're there. I'm going to make a bed of a cilantro lime rice, and then on top, we're going to add the carnitas. Then on the side, we're going to add a little bit of some romaine, some fresh pico, some corn that I made with some butter and garlic. Also going to do some sliced avocados, a little bit of sour cream, and then I go around and I crumble lots of queso cotija all around the tray. For the sauce, I made them a raw tomatillo and jalapeno salsa with a little bit of lime juice and cilantro. Of course, you know, we can't forget about their foik. For their drink they didn't get the option on the soda because they all requested some of that tuna water that i made last time the prickly pear water so that's what they had that's it guys i'm just gonna hurry my ass up get everything ready for them including their drink so they can come and pick up during lunch time bye All right, guys so we're about to make a tuna strawberry lemonade these i know as tunas but you also may know them as prickly pears they come from a cactus and they're delicious remind me of the red dragon fruit but a little bit tastier and cheaper usually to open the fruit i just make a slit and then i spread it open and the fruit comes out but for some reason this time there was a lot of fruit left behind in that skin and i was not gonna allow that to your blender you're gonna add about three to four prickly pears you're also gonna add about five clean strawberries two whole lemons and then your cup of sugar wink wink we add a little bit of water blend until smooth and strain because those prickly pears have black hard ass seeds so to your pitcher you're gonna add some ice always add some garnish in there because garnish is life fill up the rest of that pitcher with water and mix now this is the perfect time for you to check for sweetness if it needs more sugar add more sugar if it's too sweet just add more water jeez louise Fill up your favorite cup with ice or their favorite cup with ice. And pour your delicious and refreshing tuna strawberry lemonade. Hope you like this recipe. Bye! Alright guys, so I came across these giant crackers that if you wet them with water, they soften up into a wrap. I was pretty spe skeptical, spectacle, <laughs> I don't know, you want to add a duck? In disbelief, because the cracker was 
a cracker. It was hard as hell. I just wet it from the water in the faucet, just like it said on the instructions, put it in a Ziploc bag, waited for 45 minutes. Plan your meals accordingly, people. Believe it or not, the wrap was actually pretty soft and flexible and not soggy. So I did a little cream cheese mayo mustard mixture, added some ham and cheese, some lettuce, tomatoes, and then I came across these brown tomatoes. I was like, brown tomatoes? I've never seen brown tomatoes. So, And they were actually really soft, like buttery soft. And when it was time to start rolling these mother checker, I was like, there is no way this is going to work unless I uninvite some tomatoes and some avocados. And it rolls without cracking because I was scared. Once I cut them up into little pinwheels, this is what they looked like. They were so freaking cute and bomb. And I gave these to Josiah and Natalie as an after school snack. There you have it, guys. Bye. All right, guys, we're going to make the chili for our loaded Big Papa Chili Dogs. For the beef, I'm going to use freshly ground brisket. Why? Well, because I have way too much of it and I need to get rid of it. I'm also going to dice up a yellow onion. For my peppers, I'm going to use a poblano and then an anaheim. The anaheim is a little bit more spicier than the poblano, but technically they both should not have any spice. Then you dice up as much garlic as your little heart desires. I did about three to four cloves. We're going to lightly saute our veggies, you know, to bring out the nice flavor in them. Then we add a little bit of salt before we start browning our ground brisket or your ground beef ground pork ground turkey whatever you choose to make your chili with for spices i freaking cheated and i just bought myself a package with chili spices but don't be cheap about it you know get yourself a really nice one we're gonna add a can of tomato sauce a can of stewed tomatoes and then half of this tall boy the other half was for me you add about a cup or two of chicken stock, depending on how stewy you want your chili. You cover it up, let this simmer for about an hour until it looks like this. Now, if you want to turn this into chili beans, just add some beans. Who cares what people say or think? This is your kitchen, your joy. Acting lunch for my husband because your girl is sleeping. So this is one of the other dinner lunch meals that I made for my husband and my kids the day that I left on my business trip. This is not even a 30 minute meal. It's more like a 15 minute one, but it's freaking bomb and everybody eats it. To a pan, we're going to add a little bit of butter and we're going to saute a couple of pieces of ham because I was trying to be a little on the fancy side. You really don't eat it. I'm going to add half of the little tomato sauce container, about a cup of sour cream, black pepper, and then some nor. Everything a quick little mix before adding a little bit of that pasta water. Not just whatever pasta water. You're going to need to salt that water and add the bay leaf. You must add the bay leaf. That's what gives it like this different taste. So you're like, hmm, what the hell is in there? Once the pasta has cooked, you're just going to add it to the sauce, give everything a quick little mix, and it's ready, guys. Anybody can make this, even Josiah, probably even Joseph. I chose to make it for them. Just crumble a little bit of Cotija cheese, a little bit of greenery to make it look nice and fancy. Cover it up, put it in the fridge, and then they can pack it up for lunch. There you have it, guys. Hope you like this recipe. Bye. Let's pack today's lunchbox for friends and followers. Today we're going a little on the experimenting side and we're gonna mess with some lamb chops. So we're gonna season them up using some onion powder, garlic powder, some black pepper, paprika, and then a little bit of lemon pepper. Then I add some white wine, mix everything up, and I let this marinate for about two hours in my fridge. To a pan, I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil, then I sear my lamb chops. Now I think my pan was a little too hot because it kind of charred them, but it's okay because we're gonna keep it moving and don't worry, they didn't burn, they didn't overcook, they were perfect. Using the same skillet, I'm going to make a glaze for those lamb chops. We're going to add a couple tablespoons of butter, some garlic, soy sauce, and then some agave nectar. Once your glaze gets nice and sticky, you're going to add those lamb chops back into that glaze. To go along with those lamb chops, I'm going to make a cheesy poblano rice. Just make a nice little bed of that rice, add some of those lamb chops, some glaze, and then I had some little tiny miniature freaking squashes. I just sauteed them, onion, garlic, and then sprinkled it with some feta cheese. I had some brown tomatoes, so I just made them a little tomato and cucumber salad. I just seasoned it with some smoky salt, black pepper, and then some olive oil. And to go along with everything, I also made them a sopa de papa with rajas and cheese. And then I just drizzled some crema Oaxaca all over the sopa so it can be nice and creamy. And for their drink, they had the option between a soda or a pink guayaba agua fresca. And there you have it, guys. Now I'm just going to hurry my ass up, get everything ready for them, including their drink and their sopa so they can come pick up during lunchtime. Bye! Hey, 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 hey,